Hello judges and thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation. Today I will be speaking on feminism and how it is not all negative and is in fact biblical. The definition of feminism according to Merriam-Webster is the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. Most people, however, seem to believe that feminism is a movement that advocates female superiority and the abolishing of the patriarchy, which is not the core of feminism, but a smaller subgroup of radical feminists. Even though the beliefs of these two groups are very different, it is a common misconception that they are the same, which gives feminism as a whole a negative connotation. To find out if people in our area viewed feminists in this way, I conducted a survey at Faith Christian High School for grades seven through 12. The students were tasked with writing out what they believed the definition of feminism was. After this, they were asked if based on their definition, they would consider themselves a feminist or not. Only 26% of students said they would. They then were asked to write down stereotypes that come to mind when thinking of feminism. These stereotypes included feminazis, man haters, aggressive, lesbian, and sexist towards men. These stereotypes show how feminism is truly perceived at our school. After this survey was collected, the students were given a second survey which had the real definition of feminism, followed by the definition of radical feminism. The students were then asked again if they would consider themselves a feminist based on the real definition. And this time, 44% said yes and 8% said kind. The students were then asked if they agreed more with real feminism or radical feminism and astounding 98.6% said real feminism. When asked if they thought radical feminists had damaged the view of feminism, 87% said that they did. This shows how uneducated most people are on the matter of feminism and how radical feminists have polluted the view of feminism as a whole. The impact at our small school is nothing compared to how feminism and gender inequality impacts the rest of the United States. Women have been fighting for equal pay since they were allowed to enter the workforce, and we are still a long way from being paid the same wages for the same work. The Equal Pay Act was instituted in 1963, and at almost 60 years later, it still isn't a reality. According to an analysis by the Institute for Women's Policy Research, at the rate the pay gap is currently changing, it will be another 144 years until the pay gap closes in Wyoming, which is the state with the largest pay gap. According to the United States Bureau of Labor and Statistics, Full-time working women in Wyoming in 2018 made only 67.8% of what their male counterparts made. California is the state with the lowest pay gap, and that still is only 88.3% of what a man makes. This may not seem that bad, but when put in monetary perspective, the difference is staggering. With this number, if a man were to make $1, a California woman would only be paid 88 cents. On a larger scale, if a man were to be paid $1,000, the woman would only receive $883. When looking at this in terms of the median annual salary for a man in California, which is $78,575, a woman would make only $62,298. That is a deficit of $16,277 a year for the same work. When you add the pink tax to this as well, women lose even more money. The pink tax is a phenomenon involving the marketing of goods towards women being more expensive than those marketed towards men. This may sound made up, but it is very real and likely happens in our local stores. This tax can be on anything from baby bottles that are pink instead of blue to women's razors. There is a movement to end this tax called Ax the Pink Tax, and on their website, they offer a feature to calculate how much money a woman has wasted in her lifetime on this tax. This calculator takes into account basic things that every woman uses in her lifetime, and the numbers are quite shocking. For example, when entering my birthday into the calculator, I am told that in my lifetime, myself and my parents have paid an extra $24,790 just on the upcharges for being a woman. They also explain how the average woman is charged an extra $1,351 every year solely because she uses the products marketed towards women. This, along with the pay gap, means that women are losing thousands of dollars every year, and these are just some of the many battles feminists are facing. Gender inequality is nothing new. It has existed since the beginning of time. In biblical times, women were not often spoken to directly. They were supposed to be spoken to through a man who oversaw her. Jesus, however, did not follow these gender norms. He would speak to women directly and even called one woman a daughter of Abraham, which had never been said before. He also first revealed himself as Messiah to a woman and let a woman be the first witness of the resurrection. Along with how Jesus acted towards women, in Genesis 1.27, it explains how all mankind, both men and women, 
were created in the image of God. This shows that both are equal and neither is superior. When it comes to how Christians should navigate this issue, a large step that can be taken would be to be treat equal, treat women equally in the church. In the book, Jesus Feminist by Sarah Bessie, Rachel Held Evans shares a story about her high school youth group. When she was attending this youth group, she shared her testimony on stage. And when she was finished, she was told by a classmate, you're a really good preacher, but too bad you're a girl. This perfectly tied into chapter three of Jesus Feminist where Bessie explained a similar story from her church. She explained how there was a woman named Lisa who oversaw the children's ministry. Her roles were almost identical to those of the youth pastor, but because of appearances, the church wouldn't give her the title of pastor. Stories like this are what drive women away from the ministry, even though we are all told to be disciples. In summary, not all feminists are radical, and it is in fact possible to be a Christian feminist. Feminism is not the desire for female dominance, but in reality, the desire for everyone to be treated as equal, regardless of gender. The Bible shows that women are not lesser than men, only beautifully different. 